is this the best small electric car that you can buy? It's the new Seat Mi Electric, and in this video, we're gonna find out. And if you wanna see some other videos of electric cars, then make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And if you wanna get the best deal on a new car, then go to whatcar.com. Now, you are probably familiar with the Mi because it's been around for quite a while, and it came out at the same time, roughly, as the Volkswagen Up and the Skoda Citigo. And in fact, those three city cars were pretty much identical. The only thing to separate them was the badge on the nose of the car. Now, Seat decided to bin the petrol-powered versions of the Mi earlier this year in the UK, and it's reinvented this car as a fully electric city car. But as you can see, part of this radical reinvention doesn't really involve any dramatic design changes. So on the outside, it's exactly the same as it was before, but it now has the word electric on the side here and also on the back. And instead of somewhere to put a petrol pump, you now have a charge port. So seeing as we're here, I will tell you a bit about the battery. So it gets a 36.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. So if you want to charge that battery from a seven kilowatt home charger, then it will go from naught to 80% in around about four hours. And if you use a rapid charger at 40 kilowatts, then it will go from naught to 80% in around about one hour. And if you want to use a three pin plug, it's going to take a while. But now let's take a look inside the car. So inside the car, just like the outside, although it's a reinvention as an electric car, there's no great difference in the design from what we have now to what we had in the petrol powered me. So same dashboard layout and also the same kind of old feeling plastics from before a bit as well, although they have lifted the interior with this kind of fancy looking front to the dashboard here. And also there's no infotainment system, but in my book, one of the best infotainment systems out there is somewhere just to hold your smartphone handily. And Seat is also offering a couple of apps to use with the car to make it a bit easier to interact with your smartphone and just integrate it a bit smoother as well. But yeah, around here, I mean, this steering wheel doesn't feel particularly great quality necessarily, but there are still good storage options dotted around the front as well, impressive for a city car. And yes, it's small, but you certainly won't have any problem if you're a tall driver getting comfortable in the front. But let's have a look at the back next. Now, the battery has been stuffed under these rear seats here, and it means that the seats are five centimeters higher than they were in the petrol powered Mi. But the good news is, because this car's got quite a boxy tall design anyway, hasn't it? You still have a decent amount of headroom. So if you are especially tall, then surprise, surprise, you won't be that comfortable in the back of a city car. But for most adults, there is a decent amount of room back here, certainly. It also doesn't feel that cramped, it's wide enough. Knee room is all right, and there is a bit of room to put your feet under the seat in front of you as well. Although you can only get two passengers back here, which could be a bit of a drawback. And also, how old school to have pop openable rear windows rather than electric windows. So that seems like maybe they could have given us some normal electric windows for this electric car, but I suppose that's not the biggest issue anyway. But now, let's drive the thing. Okay, so I am in central Madrid, trying not to crash, getting very lost. But I'm going to tell you all that you need to know about what the Seat Mi Electric is like to drive. And obviously, as with all electric cars, the place to start is with the battery. So 36.8 kilowatt hours and 161 miles is the range. And when you consider how cheap this car is compared to other electric cars, that is a very impressive number. Yes, there are cars that will go a lot further, but they are all much more expensive than this. Now, what's the performance like? Well, around town, really, it's all you'd ever need it to be. It's very, very quick off the line. At all town speeds, it offers really good flexible acceleration. And we've also had some motorway driving earlier on, and it was fine there as well. Could get up to motorway speeds without trouble. It is limited to 81 miles an hour. And also when you're going at those faster speeds, the acceleration doesn't feel quite as flexible as it does around town. So in town, if you see a gap in a queue of traffic that you want to zip into, you just floor it and it's really quick, easily in there. But on the motorway, if you're trying to overtake something, it doesn't quite have that effortless performance that you get at lower speeds. But that's something you can say of a lot of other electric cars as well, especially the smaller ones. And it's interesting, isn't it, that in this electric car revolution that we've been going through, electric city cars haven't really had much of an impact at all, have they? So we've had the VW E up, but that was very expensive and the range was about 60 miles in the real world. So that's not really useful at all, is it? Likewise, we have the Smart 44 EQ. Again, very expensive with a limited range. So kind of what's the point really? Unless you have a very, very, very specific lifestyle that fits perfectly into having only 
60 miles of real world range, then it's not really gonna be enough to tempt you into an electric car. But with the Seat Mi electric, that could all be about to change because this car has a good range, it's well priced, it's good to drive, plus there's gonna be more cars like this joining it soon. So there's gonna be more competition in this class. We said before that the Mi, Citigo and Up are all very closely related, so it's no surprise really that we've got the Mi electric, we're gonna have an electric Citigo, and we're gonna have another E Up as well. So lots of competition in this class. And those claimed ranges are all gonna be very similar with each other. The pricing will probably be quite similar. So you could have three good cars to choose from in this electric city car class. But compared to the new Zoe, the Mi Electric's interior does feel quite dated, so really not much has changed from when we first saw the Mi car a good few years ago. And even things like the driver display just has a really low resolution to it, and the dials look a bit old as well. And of course we don't have an infotainment system, although it is great having the smartphone holder there. And I suppose the resolution on this screen down here is more modern and looks nicer, but still, a Zoe is just more polished. The steering in the Mi Electric is fine it's really light around town so really nicely weighted for any kind of parking maneuvers it's fine for all of that it does feel a bit unnaturally weighted when you're going at faster speeds it's got quite a heavy self-centering to it so it doesn't feel particularly natural there's not a great deal of feel through it as well but you know we're not talking about how this is going to handle on the test track or anything around town really there's no complaints to be had similarly the ride it's impressive because the battery pack weighs a good couple of hundred kilograms and we've seen on other electric cars like the Peugeot E208 which I drove recently and you can click up there to see our review of that car. There you had a petrol car which was given an electric battery and the suspension was nowhere near as good in the electric car but in the Mi around town we've gone over some big bumps just there and it's really well cushioned feels very supple there's no kind of firm edge to it that you might expect with that additional weight you've also got regenerative braking in the Mi Electric so when you lift off your foot the car slows down and then harvests that energy to charge the battery and using the gear selector down here you can increase the level of recuperation so when you've got it in D mode you can bump it up to level 3 recuperation but to unlock level 4 recuperation you have to push the gear selector back into B mode so you're on 4 so when you are on level four, when you lift your foot off the accelerator, the braking is that much more pronounced and that much more effective than it is compared to level one. And it's good to be able to have the choice. It is a bit fiddly having to do it all down here. Some other electric cars use paddles on the steering wheel to help you do that instead. But it's still good that you've got the option to change the level of regenerative braking. You've also got a few different driving modes to put it in. So you've got normal mode, and then if you click a button down on the center console, you've got Eco and Eco Plus. If we put it into eco mode, then the performance is reduced slightly because you're just trying to eke out some more range. And then eco plus, you get a sign flashing up saying comfort and performance severely restricted. So I'm not sure how comfort could be severely restricted, but I guess it's to do with the air conditioning. So when you put it in eco plus, it will shut off the air con. And if you've got your heated seat on, then it will turn that down as well. But really normal mode is probably all you'd want to stick it in. That was everything you need to know about the Seat Mi Electric. And sorry it sounded like I was talking in a shoebox in the car, and the fact we were driving a black car, but showing you lots of footage of a silver car. We didn't have much time on the launch, but we still wanted to get a video out to you. For even more information on the Seat Mi Electric, go to whatcar.com. Don't forget, if you want to buy a new car, we've got a great deal waiting for you on our website. And we have loads of other electric car reviews on our channel, so make sure you're subscribed to see it all.